Over the past few weeks, near Tampa Bay on the west coast of Florida, more than 1,700 tonnes of dead fish and other marine life have been washed ashore. This is as a result of a red tide. More on this later, but what has also been occurring as a consequence of the red tide is sharks heading for the relative safety of Buttonwood Canal and Tampa Bypass Canal. Hundreds of sharks are crowding into these canals, and up to four different species have been seen, including the bonnet head, lemon, black tip, and nurse sharks. They have entered the canals looking for a safe haven away from the toxic water and decomposing fish. The fear is that with so many of them, their oxygen supply is going to become depleted before the red tide disappears from their normal habitat. It is really very sad. These devastating red tides are a natural phenomena, which occur nearly every summer along Florida's Gulf Coast. The notorious red tide is a form of harmful algal plume, which is caused by microscopic algae. Different species of algae produce different types of algal blooms. Red tides are caused by the algae Carina brevis, and often turn the water red, hence the name. Most algal blooms are beneficial, as they are food for many sea animals. Some blooms can be harmful, as when masses of algae die and decompose, they deplete oxygen in the water. Animals may also die or leave the area. The problem with Carina brevis is that they produce toxins called brevitoxins, which can kill fish, shellfish, birds and mammals and cause harm to humans and their pets. If the algal cell gets damaged, or when it dies, it releases the toxin into the water and they can also get into the air. Carinia brevis is always present in the Gulf of Mexico at background levels of 1,000 cells per litre or less and blooms occur almost annually in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, most frequently in the southwest Florida waters. These blooms have been recorded as occurring before humans settled into the area and it is believed that there is no direct link between red tides due to Carina brevis and nutrient pollution. Red tides can last from a few weeks to longer than a year. They typically develop 10 to 40 miles offshore, away from man-made nutrient sources, but they do move inshore due to tides and the weather, where nutrient pollution due to urban and agricultural runoff help the algae to grow. Marine life can come into contact with the toxins in a variety of ways, such as ingesting the cells, inhaling the toxins, and coming into contact with the toxins in the water. Eating toxic prey is another way of ingesting the toxin. The brevitoxins can accumulate in primary consumers such as zooplankton, fish, bivalves and other filter feeders. The toxins have also been shown to persist on seagrass and in sediments. The effect on fish is devastating and sometimes the only noticeable effect of the blooms is large-scale die-offs which were noticed as long ago as 1844. There are a number of signs that a fish has been affected by the toxin, such as violently twisting and swimming in a corkscrew fashion. Eventually the fish dies because their gills stop functioning. This usually happens immediately after exposure, but can also occur after long-term exposure. Sharks don't usually have large-scale die-offs, and there is no evidence of it happening this time. But they are obviously trying to avoid the toxin by entering the canals where the water is not salty and the Carinia brevis can't survive. However, in October 2000, an estimated 100 to 300 black tip sharks and Atlantic sharp nose sharks occurred in northwest Florida at the same time that there was a Carina brevis red tide bloom. Before this occurred, there was no information about red tide induced shark deaths and I haven't found any information on any since that date. The dead sharks were mostly juveniles, and some were observed to have bleeding around the mouths and gills. Tissue samples from three black tip sharks and one Atlantic sharp nose shark were collected, and brevitoxins were found in all four sharks. In subsequent years, a study of sharks in this area found brevitoxins in their gastrointestinal contents, showing that they were exposed to brevitoxins through their diet. The study also found high concentrations of brevitoxin in the gills of many live caught sharks. In 2018, a whale shark washed ashore at Sanibel Island in Florida. It had blood coming from its gills, and when sampled, its muscle, liver, intestines, and stomach contents tested positive for brevitoxin. At the time, there was a red tide along the Florida coast from Sarasota to Collier County. 
As to how the whale shark came to be washed ashore is a mystery as they do not normally roam near coastlines. They also have an incredibly good sense of smell and should be able to avoid feeding in areas where there is a toxic bloom. Evidently, this was not the case for this particular whale shark. As well as fish and sharks, other marine animals are also affected by these toxic blooms. There are more strandings of live and dead turtles when there is a Carina brevis bloom. Sea turtles exposed to brevi toxins all swim in circles, lack coordination, bob their heads, display jerky body movements and extreme lethargy. They can be exposed to brevi toxins in two ways. One is by the inhalation of aerosol toxins and the other is by ingestion of contaminated prey. The toxin accumulates in mollusks and crustaceans and any animal which eats these, such as loggerhead and Kemp's Ridley turtles, will accumulate the toxins in their tissues. It also accumulates in green turtles whose diet consists mainly of seagrass, as seagrass also becomes contaminated. Scientists have shown that animals higher up the food chain can be exposed to brevi toxins months after a red tide has dissipated due to it persisting in the environment and tissues of the organisms. Manatees are also greatly affected by brevi toxin as they consume large amounts of seagrass. In my video, Why the Adorable Manatees of Florida Are Dying, I talked about the manatees on the east coast of Florida and the conditions in the Indian River that were leading to their deaths. But they have also been dying on the west coast due to the harmful algal bloom. There have been 15 confirmed cases of death due to brevi toxin, with 18 suspected cases which are awaiting confirmation from tissue samples. So why is this a particularly bad year for a harmful algal bloom? Well, many people blame the controlled discharge of water from the Piney Point fertiliser plant which started on March the 30th. The water has a high concentration of phosphorus and nitrogen, both of which can fuel red tides. The water had to be released due to a leak in one of the reservoirs and there were concerns that the wall would collapse and flood the surrounding area. In total, 215 million gallons of polluted water were pumped into Tampa Bay within a few days. Scientists believe that this is why the red tide has been particularly brutal this year. So, although red tides occur naturally, humans undoubtedly make the situation worse, fueling these deadly blooms which affect the whole ecosystem, killing thousands of marine animals and contaminating primary producers such as seagrass. We can only hope that the red tide diminishes before the sharks run out of oxygen in the canals and that their bodies are not added to the huge number of dead animals that have already had to be removed from the shoreline. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.